There are many reasons why seat belts should be worn by everyone who drives or rides in a motor vehicle. But despite overwhelming facts that show that seat belts reduce injuries and save lives, there are some persistent myths that suggest some members of the family should not be protected. The purpose of this presentation is to shatter those myths. I've heard all the reasons why it's important to wear seat belts. And I wear them most of the time. Except now, I'm not so sure wearing them is the right thing to do. I'm afraid wearing seat belts is going to hurt my baby. Myth number one. Seat belts increase the risk of injury to unborn babies. Somehow, a number of women have gotten the impression that they should not use seat belts when they are pregnant. Yet nothing could be further from the truth. The fact is, when properly worn, seat belts are nearly 50% effective in preventing injury to any vehicle occupants, and that includes women who are pregnant. Should an accident occur, the best way to protect an unborn baby from injury is to protect the mother. And the best way for the mother to protect herself is by wearing seat belts properly. Reliable studies have demonstrated this point. In any accident, there are two collisions. The first involves the vehicle itself as it hits another object. In a front-end accident, the forward energy of the moving vehicle is absorbed by the crushing of the vehicle structure. This crushability is scientifically designed in as a protective feature. The second collision occurs inside the vehicle. The car stops, but the unbelted individual doesn't. The energy of the individual's forward motion is absorbed by striking the vehicle's interior. An impact like this is a chief cause of injury or death of an unbelted individual in an accident. When the passenger is a pregnant woman, the baby may also be injured or killed. But look what happens when a pregnant woman is properly secured by seat belts. Her energy is absorbed through the belts. Chances are good that she will not strike the interior of the vehicle. Even if she does, the force of the impact will be greatly lessened. If this were you, your chances of surviving the accident would have been greatly improved. And therefore, your unborn baby's chances of surviving would have been greatly improved too. The same thing applies in other types of collisions. If you don't wear your seat belts, you may be ejected from your vehicle. Statistics show that being ejected greatly increases your chances of being severely injured or killed. And the chances are even greater that your baby will be injured or killed as well. No matter what kind of accident you may be involved in, wearing seat belts properly will keep you in the vehicle and help protect you from injury or death. And when you are protected, your baby will be protected too. Yes, but I still worry that the pressure of the belt itself is going to hurt my baby. That's a common concern, but it's still a myth. When you wear seat belts properly, it's more likely that your baby won't be hurt. And you'll have the same protection as if you were not pregnant. The combination lap and shoulder belts offer the most protection. Let me show you the proper way to put them on. What I'm going to show you applies to the belts in this particular car. Now remember, other vehicles may have different seat belt mechanisms, so you should always check your owner's manual for the proper way to put on your own particular belts. Be sure your seat is in a comfortable position and you're sitting upright. Now with your right hand, pull the latch plate out as far as you can reach, sliding it along the belt as necessary. Then attach it to the buckle until it clicks. 
If the belt isn't long enough to go around you, you may need to get a seat belt extender from your vehicle dealer. The lap belt should be positioned as low on your hips as possible, under the abdomen, an unborn child. It should be snug around your pelvic bones and secure across your upper thighs. To make it snug, pull up on the shoulder portion of the belt. There should be no slack in the lap belt portion. Now, position the shoulder portion of the belt over your collarbone and down across your upper body. There's just a little tension on the belt now when the car is sitting still. But the system is designed to lock up securely should an impact occur. There's a comfort feature designed into the wind-up mechanism to help you get the shoulder belt just the way you want it. It works like a window shade. Pull the belt out at least five inches, then let it come back against your body. Pull out again an inch or so, just far enough to give you a little slack and release. The belt will latch and should be comfortable. Now you're wearing both belts properly. They are positioned over strong, bony parts of your body where the stresses can best be taken. Should you have to stop quickly, or if you are involved in an accident, they will absorb your forward energy. Many physicians are asked by their pregnant patients whether or not they should wear seat belts. The answer should be yes. Lap shoulder belts preferably, or if they're not available, then a lap belt alone. It'll help prevent striking the vehicle's interior or being ejected. Properly worn, seat belts help prevent injury or death to the fetus in the event of an accident. This is backed up by extensive data that show that pregnancy will continue without interruption after traumas that are not catastrophic. In other words, in accidents where the mother is not severely injured or killed. Remember, the best way to prevent injury to your baby is to prevent injury to you. And in a vehicle, wearing a lap shoulder belt properly is the best way to assure that. Myth number two. Children can't be expected to wear seat belts. Can you get the door, please? OK, thank you. Come on. There we go. My kids won't sit still long enough to wear their seat belts. They have to move around or they drive me crazy. As for the baby, well, I put her in her car seat when I drive like I'm supposed to. And I put the older kids in the rear seat. Oh, I may not make them use the belts, but under the circumstances, I figure that's the safest way to go. No, that's not the safest way to go. That's why all states have passed laws that require children below a certain age to be restrained either in a car seat that is securely belted into place or by the vehicle seat belt system. Even so, all too often, parents allow children to be unbelted, free to move around the interior of the vehicle. They have a sense of security that if children ride in the rear seat area, they will be protected in the event of an accident. But is that a fact? Look what can happen in a serious accident. They can be ejected from the vehicle. Using a seat belt and wearing it properly can make a real difference by keeping them in the vehicle. A properly secured child seat will also protect younger children should an accident occur. There are a number of child seat restraint systems available. They're designed for different ranges of heights and weights of children. You should be sure you have one that is sized right for each child. Check your local laws to determine what is required for different ages and sizes. Now, some people believe that holding an infant or small child offers ample protection, but that's a myth too. Remember what happens in an accident. When you are unbelted, your forward energy is absorbed by hitting the interior of the vehicle. If you are holding a baby, it could be crushed between you and the instrument panel. Even when you are belted, there are tremendous forces at work. In a crash as slow as 10 miles per hour, the forces on you and the baby may reach 20 Gs. That means if the baby weighs 12 pounds, for the moments of the crash, it will in effect have an apparent weight of 240 pounds. That makes the baby almost impossible to hold on to in an accident. Hard to believe? Well, look what happened in a test conducted not long ago in Australia. A rugby player tried to hold on to an infant dummy in a crash at 30 miles per hour. He couldn't do it, and neither could you. To better protect your children while driving, no matter what their age is, always restrain them with seat belts, both in the front and rear seats. Follow the instructions in your vehicle's owner's manual. 
Restrain infants and small children with securely belted child seats following manufacturer's instructions. If the proper size child seat is not available, small children should be restrained with whatever belts exist in the vehicle. Children who have been in the habit of using seat belts from infancy accept them as a normal part of riding in a motor vehicle. Myth number three. Seat belts will trap me in my car if I have an accident. Seat belts scare me. I'm afraid they'll choke me or trap me if I'm in an accident. We don't want to be trapped. If our truck goes in the river or catches on fire, we want to be able to get out. There is no myth more widespread than the one about seat belts trapping people in their cars in the event of a fiery crash or a fall in the water. The facts are, the chances of an accident ending up with a vehicle in the water or on fire are extremely small. In one state's 12-year study, fires occurred in fewer than four out of every 10,000 of the vehicles that were involved in accidents. In those crashes, 72 unbelted passengers were fatally injured. 56 belted drivers survived, and 37 of them had no injury whatsoever. Remember what happens in an accident. When the vehicle stops, unbelted individuals continue into the interior structure. This may result in unconsciousness or even death. Those individuals would be in no condition to get out of the vehicle. But if they're belted in, chances are much better that they will avoid serious injury remain conscious and be able to unbuckle their belts and climb out even in the extremely unlikely event of fire or submersion in water. As for your seat belts choking you, there's little chance of that occurring when the belts are properly worn. In an accident, your body tends to rotate away from a properly worn belt. Whatever discomfort you might feel would be much worse if you weren't wearing your belt. The fact is, no matter what kind of accident that you may be involved in, your chances of escaping without serious injury are much greater when you're wearing a lap shoulder belt properly. Look, I pride myself on being a pretty good driver. Never had an accident, and chances are I won't. I mean, I rarely drive very far. Just to the kids' school, mostly, to the grocery store, and to the shopping center. You don't need seat belts for that kind of driving, just near your house. When all the myths are shattered, people tend to fall back on one old final excuse. I'm a good driver, and I don't need to use seat belts when I'm driving short distances. Yet, the facts show that by far the greatest number of accidents occur within 25 miles of home. And the greatest number of serious injuries and deaths occur at speeds of less than 40 miles per hour. Accidents can occur any place, any time, at any speed. They don't necessarily have anything to do with your ability as a driver. Many people are innocent victims of accidents caused by others. And you may have no control over the circumstances. You have to protect yourself from the careless driver, the overly aggressive driver, the reckless driver, the drunk driver. There's one very important thing you can do to protect yourself and your family from these other drivers. Insist that everyone who drives or rides in your vehicle wear seat belts. Everyone, always. Fathers, mothers, friends, teenagers, younger children, infants, and expectant mothers. Let's explode the myths once and for all for very good reason. Think about it. Seatbelts are for everyone. And that's no myth.